So welcome back to another episode of Stoffer Garage, and today we're going to be deep cleaning the exterior of this 2010 Range Rover Sport Supercharged that is covered in road grime, salt, dust, dirt, anything that you can imagine that is on the roads of Ohio during the winter time, and it needs a complete deep clean of the exterior. So let's go ahead and get started with this detail, and the first thing obviously is to go ahead and give you guys some amazing pressure washing shots and getting as much dirt off as possible using just the pressure washer. Now, if you live in the northern states where they salt the roads, you understand how fast your car can get dirty and how important it is to protect the paint because one, you're trying to minimize how much of the paint gets rusted, how much of that stuff sticks to it when you wash it, and having a nice ceramic coating or a nice layer of wax is definitely a necessity when you're trying to protect your paint in the winter time. Now, that also goes to say when comes springtime for summer, um, but definitely each season it has its own importance when it comes to waxing and protecting your paint. Now typically I always get asked why don't I have one of those underbody roller sprayer things and to be honest it's more of a pain in the butt to use those because you can never get to every single surface area. What I actually do is I go to those local drive through car washes and I specifically go up through the drive through and say, hey, I just want an underbody wash and spray. And what you can do is when you drive through those, they have so many more spray nozzles and so much more water pressure and flow than what a pressure washer could ever do that it just does a much better job with protecting it and getting all that, so, um, all that dirt and road grime and salt off the bottom of your car than you can ever do on your own unless you got the car on a lift and that's a whole different story but if you're just trying to do it quickly and especially in the winter time if you live up north definitely look at that as an option to help protect your underbody
Now with the outside completely rinsed off of just using the pressure washer, which did an incredible job on its own as you can see here, there is still quite a bit of grime and dirt on the car and we're gonna be using the foam cannon to go ahead and aid again with getting all that soap off the surface by letting it drip down the outside of the body. Now if you use a foam cannon and it's cold outside, you will notice that it doesn't do as good of a job with creating a thick layer of foam. Um, that is partially why you don't see it caked on as much as it has been in the last several of my videos. Um, but it still does a good job, it's still a good step to do, and it does still help with kind of helping loosen up some of that caked on debris. Now after rinsing off all of the foam cannon soap, I like to use my iron remover on the body and the wheels um, before I use my wash mitt method to finally clean it. And you'll see here with how much iron is removed just from the surface of these objects without having to do any scrubbing. Uh, this is a great step if you're gonna do any sort of you know clay barring or you know any sort of waxing afterwards. Um, it's just a nice added step to remove some of that oxidation and some of that you know foreign debris on the surface of your paint. One thing if you've never used an iron remover before is that the actual smell of this stuff is really, really bad. It's got a really strong sulfur smell and that's due to the ammonium mercaptoacetate in it that gives it that bad rotten egg type smell. Now for washing the paint, I just use my wash mitt and I have a bucket that is full of just fresh, clean water. And then I have another bucket that actually has my soap solution. Both have grit guards at the bottom, which is more of like a screen at the base. So that way when you dip your wash mitt after washing a panel into that bucket, all of that dirt and debris sinks to the bottom, kind of making sure that you remove as many contaminants, as much dirt as possible from your wash mitt when you move it from panel to panel. Now for my wheel cleaning regimen, I have several tools that I use. I have this one, which is a more flexible bristle brush that allows you to get inside of the wheel drum itself around the brake caliper behind the actual uh, spokes on the wheels. Um, it does a really good job at doing that. Plus it's flexible and it doesn't scratch the surface. Then I have a stiffer bristle brush that I use for actual the tire um, surface itself. And then I have a brush that I use that is actually a soft bristle brush for the face and kind of the painted areas of the rim. And then I use my detailing brushes for inside the lug nuts and around the uh, air fill nozzle. 
and then I use those same soft brushes for inside the wheel well. Now with the car completely washed off, I'm pulling it into the garage. And one thing that you're not gonna see in this video is I'm not gonna be drying the surface of the paint. And the main reason why I'm not drying it is because now we're gonna clay bar the surface to remove all of the contaminants from the paint surface. And to be, you know, to make sure that the clay bar slides across the surface, I'm using a quick detailing spray, which has a lubricity to it and allows that clay to glide smoothly across the surface after it removes any contaminants from it. Shots like this is exactly why you clay bar because this is just road debris, you know, dirt, stuff that gets caked into a paint, especially on a white car, you would have never expected to find this much dirt on the surface. And it's a fairly quick process. I would say it probably takes, you know, max 20 minutes to do a whole car, um, but it is extremely crucial because all of that stuff on the surface of your paint is not allowing the wax and protective coating that you put on it to actually bond with the painted surface. It's bonding to this dirt and not allowing your paint to shine as much as it could. Now after I'm done clay barn, I'm just gonna be going back over the car again with my quick detailing spray, spritzing the surface and using my clean microfiber towels to wipe clean the entire surface. And this is why I mentioned earlier why I didn't dry the car, because you're gonna be doing this process anyways and there's no reason to add an extra step if it's not necessary. Now I'm gonna be using my polisher and my microfiber pad with my ceramics coating uh, wax uh, to put onto the surface and to apply it in a smooth, even coat evenly across the surface of the paint. Thank you. 
After going around the whole vehicle, now I'm gonna come back to the very beginning, which is the hood where I started, and using my clean microfiber towel to remove any of the dried on residue after the wax uh, has dried and flashed over. For the tires, I'm gonna be using my, uh, this is actually a ceramic coating microfiber applicator pad. I've found that they work extremely well and they're like the perfect size for applying a tire gel to the paint. And I'm gonna be applying it liberally to the surface of the tire. But then I like to also go back with my detailing brushes and to get into that line between the rim and the tire. And then also sometimes with the lettering, in the grooves of the actual uh, tread. Sometimes you miss some of those spots and it just, you know, it helps make sure that you get a complete coverage um, with a detailing brush. All right, now here are the before and after shots of this dirty Range Rover and to getting it to a clean state and you know, making a white car shine and making it look like it is dripping wet is a task that is only, you know, up to certain waxes can actually make that accomplished. And this one did a really good job. And plus clay bar in the surface just removes any of those contaminants. So it makes the paint shine a lot more than it typically would if you didn't do that step. Um, but you can see here that some of these rims are scratched still, but there is one rim that is not scratched at all. And that was from a previous video that I had done where I showed you guys how to fix and repair curb rash on your wheels where we repainted it and sanded down all of those scratches. And I will say after several months and after putting new tires on it, so after a tire changer ripped apart, you know, took off the old tire, it is still not chipped, it is still not scratching. Um, so if you're looking to refix your wheels and remove any curb rashing, definitely check out that video. I'll have a link in the description box for you guys or as an iCard up above. So that way you guys can check it out and repair your rims as well. And thank you guys for watching today's video and be on the lookout for this Saturday's upcoming detail. It's another disaster deep clean and the car turned out amazing as well as always on Stoffer Garage. So make sure you subscribe, hit that bell, and I'll see you guys in the next video.